visitors. Ponya's visiting this morning, Barb, and, and Lily brought her sister with her. <laughs> so that's pretty good for us, three visitors on Sunday morning. So I, I can't remember when somebody saw Lily's sister that first time she came with her and said, she got a, thought one was the other one. Yeah, that was and they kind of look a lot alike, you know. But, uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you can tell who people's moms and dads are. They look a lot alike. And uh, this morning we're going to look at Luke chapter 11 and talk about how to pray. You know, really, prayer is a popular subject and uh, a lot of promises in the Bible. One of the promises I really like, you know, it says, uh, whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is that a promise? Yes. God says if you realize you're a sinner and be sorry for your sins and pray and ask me to save you, I'll save you. That, that means we're going to go to heaven when we die, right? It's a good thing to know there's a heaven. It amazes me sometimes to get talking to people. They say everything's relative. I was talking to our, my heart doctor and he said... I was asking him what about truth, you know. He says, well, that's relative. Well, I don't believe truth is relative. You think one plus one makes two? How many believe that? Well, is that relative? Or is that a fact? Are there any facts? John chapter 14, Jesus, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Of course, a lot of people got a lot of different ideas. They think if you're good outweighs your bad. Uh, I heard a politician the other day, and uh, he was talking about, is he going to go to heaven? He said, well, he believed there was a heaven, but he had some other things, I think, kind of mixed up. He didn't know maybe a lot about the Bible because he said, well, if if you're good out as if, outweighs your bad, then you're going to go to heaven. Is that what the Bible teaches? No. You know, you're going to get up to heaven and God's going to put this stuff, all your good on one side of the scale and all your bad on the other side of the scale. And whichever way it tips, that's the way it's going to work. Or is it, by, for by grace that you say through faith that not of yourselves can to God, not of works, at least any man should boast. So I can't work my way to heaven. Uh, I worked quite a while for Coca-Cola, about four, over 40 years. And uh, I, some people work places 50 years. That's a long time to work for one place, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, they gave me a check every week. I was thankful for that. I could pay my bills, but I couldn't work my way to heaven. How much would it cost to go to heaven? I don't think you could buy a doorknob up there, let alone the... That's right. <laughs> you, you think rent's high down here? I wonder where it'd be if you had to pay rent in heaven. That'd be, that'd be quite a bit, don't you think? But it's free. If you trust Jesus, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come and get in, receive you unto myself. Where I am, there you may be also. He said there's many mansions in heaven. So he's getting us a place ready. And so the only way I know to go to heaven is you pray and ask the Lord to forgive you and save you. And, uh, but you can't just say the words. You have to believe it in your heart. That's right. A lot of times it sounds like, well, just repeat this little prayer after me. Well, I don't think that'll do it. Uh, you need to pray and ask God to forgive you and save you. But you have to believe that Jesus had to die on the cross to pay for your sins and that He rose from the dead. And because He could do that for Himself, He can do it for you. Amen. Now, if He was still laying in the grave, we'd be in trouble. He's not on the cross. It bothers me when I see a picture and they've got Jesus still hanging on the cross. Is Jesus on the cross? No. No. They took him down off the cross, buried him. Three days later, he came out of the grave. And some days after that, he went back up to heaven. 
And he said, on the way, on getting ready to go up, there's two men in white apparel standing there in the first part of the book of Acts and said uh, that he was going to come back as like he went up. Was he in the body when he went up? Yes. Then I think he'll be in the body when he comes back. Amen. And then he'll come and set up a kingdom here on the earth. That's what the Bible teaches. But we're going to look at Luke chapter 11. And he kind of gives us a, a pattern for prayer. This is good. You know how we usually learn to pray is we get around some other people that pray and we kind of copy them. Isn't that how we do it? We hear them pray. We learn from that. When Jesus' disciples followed him around, do you think they ever heard him praying? Sometimes he prayed all night. And uh, they heard him pray. And so then they asked him, said, well, teach us to pray like John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. And so look at uh, Luke chapter 11. And uh, we'll start here in verse 1. It says, And came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Shall we be trying to teach people to pray today? Well, it was... I, I thought it was a good thing out of the commons. The church out there had a booth and they offered to pray for you. And some people would go up and pray with them. I remember one lady, I went up and asked them to pray and they prayed with her. And Edward and I went over there and we were talking to them. They prayed with us. And it good to have somebody pray with you. But you don't have to. You can pray by yourself. Well, what's praying? She talking to God. And also, it's a good thing if you listen. You know, if we do all the talking, I think we ought to listen a little. We ought to ask God things and then see how God answers us. God answered prayers. Well, if He didn't answer prayers, you couldn't be saved. That was one of the first prayers. I remember the Philippian jailer was in jail and, and Paul was in there and singing at midnight and and uh, then the Lord set him free, really. And they, the Philippian jailer was about to kill himself. He says, what must I... He asked Paul and Simon, he said, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Do you, do you believe Jesus saved you? I believe he said that. It was a long time ago. I wasn't very old. I, I really kind of tried to put it off, but the uh, Lord kept speaking to my heart about it, let me know that I need to get saved. So the disciples asking Jesus to help them learn to pray in verse 2, and he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Wouldn't it be good if we had a little heaven on earth? Amen. Boy, I get tired of hearing some drunk ran into somebody and killed somebody. I guess uh, they ran into some firemen, killed a fireman. I don't know, did they kill the fireman? They knocked him way up into the air. About every weekend. But then they'll say, drink responsibly. Mm -hmm. Gamble responsibly too. But some do and some don't. Problem is, some people can't control it if they ever get to drink it. It says, give us a, a day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and let and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall uh, go unto him at midnight, and say unto them, Friend, lead me, lend me three loaves. <coughs> Verse six: For a friend of mine is in uh, on a, is in his journey, is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him, and he. Uh, from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. 
I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, uh, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now usually they take that last part of those verses there. You know, if you ask the Lord to save you, will he save you? Will God open the door? It says ask and you'll receive. Well, what if you, uh, should you just ask once? We can't get saved over and over, I don't believe. But some things you need to ask more than once. That's right. And uh, we'll go down through some of these things here. I'll just try not to be too awful long this morning. Of course, that's dangerous when I say that. Isn't it? Yeah. But I'm going to work on that. I, no, I, I need to work on it. Uh, but anyway, like I say, there's a lot of books. So prayer's a, a really a, a popular subject. I think it's an important subject, don't you? Do you need to pray? Do you ever need anything from God? Yes. Need any help? Yes. Uh, do you know anybody else that needs some help from God? Yes. Can you pray for them? Yes. Should you pray for them? Yes. We had a young guy get saved. And it was kind of uh, funny in a way because he got saved one week and the next Sunday his mom's there and he comes pushing her. When he did the invitation, he's pushing her down the aisle. He's wanting her to get saved. He got saved. He wanted her to be saved. And so he's pushing her down the aisle. And they get up to the front of the church. And I said, well, Randy, it won't work that way. She has to want to get saved. <laughs> Didn't she have to want to get saved? And, uh, and she said, the mother said, well, don't. I want to get saved. <laughs> but then that's something he wanted his mom saved. Because he got saved. Don't you want your loved ones to be saved? family, friends. It's pretty important, isn't it? It says, uh, the Bible says, for what is a man proud to show lose his own, uh, if he loses his own soul, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There's really nothing. You you couldn't buy your way into heaven, but God will give you the gift. That's for the right. wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so it's a gift. But I believe you have to ask and desire it. And you need to mean business when you pray and ask the Lord to save you. But there are several things as we went through these first verses. And uh, I wanted to talk about those. Uh, first one, it says, Hallowed be thy name. What do we get from that? Hallowed be thy name. Well, that's worship. Should we humble ourselves before God when we pray? Yes, sir. I think we ought to come in the presence of God and I think maybe we ought to bow our head. Some people close their eyes. A lot of little kids do this, right? Well, you don't have to do that. I've seen people pray laying flat on their face on the ground. Well, you could even pray driving down the road, could you? But don't close your eyes. <laughs> That'd be dangerous, wouldn't it? Well, I've prayed going down the road one time. Somebody said, I don't believe this. Uh, used to be 146th Street. Uh, going out on the, the new 37 over there, all that was there was a stop sign. So I said, I can't remember that. Well, I can. I was going to work one night, and I come up to that stop sign, and I hit the brakes, and it was a sheet of ice. And I started sliding. And when you hit ice like that, and you hit your brakes, you speed up instead of slow down. Well, I was sliding toward 37. I pray the Lord save me because what if I got run out into the road there and a car come along and hit me. Another time we were driving back to Springfield, Missouri and Caroline and another lady in the car and, and it was we were about 30 miles out of Springfield and, and it started snowing real hard. And uh, so we were going about out on the interstate, we're going about 30 miles an hour. So it was pretty slick out there. And uh, so 
uh, I was trying to drive slow like everybody else, but car in front of me put on their brakes, well then I started, I put on my brakes. Well then the car starts sliding all over the place. And I, I told Carol on this other, hang on. <laughs> That's all I could say, is, hang on. Now if Mark had been with us, he'd been locking all the door locks. <laughs> he thinks that makes you safe if you lock the door locks. But that uh, didn't work that way. But when he's little, that's what he did. If Carol had a close call, click, 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 he'd hear the door locks. Of course, most cars now, they, after you get a certain speed, they lock on their own. Back, that was back in the old days. Nancy would say, well, you're dating yourself. And well, I'm that old whether I like it or not. But uh, anyway, we started sliding. I was afraid somebody was going to hit us from the back, you know, because it was a bumper to bumper out on the interstate going about 30 mile an hour. I said, hang on. You know, down in Missouri, they got these big places where the rocks go up like this, right up the side of the road. You seen those? We started sliding backwards towards some of that. Just before we hit them, the car stopped. Nobody hit us from the back. I pulled out, turned, and went right on down the road. You think the Lord was watching over me? Yeah, yes, sir. Well, you know, you pray situations like that, you pray, don't you? Yeah. Man, Peter's walking on the water. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And he started to sink, though, because he got to looking at all the trouble in the storm. And then he said, Lord, save me. And the Lord reached out and saved him. Well, that was a short prayer. You have to pray a big, long, fancy prayer. But no, I think we need to come to the Lord knowing we need God's help. And we'll do it in a humble way. And we're worshiping God. And uh, then he says, Thy kingdom come. Well, what, what are we asking for there? We ask for God's will to be done. You think the world would be better off if God was running it? Hey. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh-huh. I think he'd do better than the Democrats and the Republicans. <laughs> well, I hate to say it, but about any time the government gets involved, says, let me help you out, you better look out. Because yeah. usually they mess it up more than they help it. And that what usually happens. Yeah, they try. But... And uh, they're, they're doing the best they can. But I think it'd be better when the Lord comes and sets up his kingdom. And I don't think there'll be any drunk drivers. I think there'll be any drunk drivers in. Well, I don't know. It might be like the Jetsons, Nancy. We just think we're, we want to be somewhere and we can't. Of course, around Noblesville, it would be nice to have a car that could fly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. You can bumper to bumper. Well, just go over them. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. I don't know how it will work in heaven. When I was a kid, you know, we'd go down to southern Indiana. It was real hilly. And, of course, it was about three-hour drive down to my grandparents. And we'd, uh, you could get up on the top of this hill and you could look way out there and see the top of the next hill. And I would think, well, as I, if I was on that next hill, that I'd be that much closer. Well, it didn't do any good. I didn't get to the next. We still had to drive down and come back up. But in heaven, maybe you'll just be able to go like that. I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting. I don't know all about how it's going to be in heaven, but I do believe it will be better than it is now. Amen. I don't just believe that. I know that's the case. And uh, then he says, give us this da our daily bread. What, what's he praying for there? Our everyday needs. Well, you might be saying, Lord, help me get this credit card bill paid. Lord, help me get my rent paid this month. Well, there's daily needs, aren't they? That young fellow that was pushing his mother down the aisle, he got uh, hadn't been saved hardly any time and he was going to have to have some surgery. And he didn't know much about praying. And he asked, somebody, he asked us, he says, can you pray for yourself? Yeah, he said, can I, can, you know, I'm going to have to have this surgery. Can I pray for myself? How would you answer him? Well, yes. yes. That's a need, isn't it? And hopefully that's not daily, but I don't know. I take handfuls of pills. It's kind of crazy. 
Brian was telling, uh, well, it was Brian's wife telling Carol, she was over at the house for what, Labor Day? And Brian takes three pills. <laughs> and he's, he's saying, I'm taking too many pills. <clears throat> well, I take a handful in the morning, I take a handful at night. Now that's taking too many pills. And I'll go to the doctor and say, can I get off some of this stuff? Oh no, you need that. It's good for your heart. It's good for this. It's good for that. I don't know. Sometimes I think you have side effects from pills too, don't you? Yeah, they mix up together. And so you got to be careful. Maybe we ought to ask the Lord to help us. You think you ought to ask the Lord to give your doctor wisdom how to treat you? Amen. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? And uh, doctors are pretty smart. They go to school a long time, but then they sometimes talk between each other, don't they? Sometimes it's good to get a second opinion. I think God's second opinion would be a good one, don't you? Let's talk to the Lord about it. And then there are spiritual needs. says, forgive us our sins as we forgive our debtors. Well, do we owe anybody anything? Well, I'm not talking about Sears. My dad always said he'd be, he would die on Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> because they used to have a Sears at, at uh, Eastgate. Somebody said, Eastgate, where's that? Well, it was on the east side of Indianapolis. It's one of the first malls that they had. And uh, we'd go to Sears all the time. And, you know, they had those big, thick catalogs. Some people call them wish books. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they had good, better, best. You ever see that? Yep. Well, here's a washing machine. This is the good one. This is the better one. This is the best one. Of course, the best one's always way more higher priced than the good one or the better one, right? And uh, so, but my dad didn't, I don't think he, he didn't die, die Owen Sears. He didn't. But do we owe anybody anything? Do you owe the Lord anything? Yes. Do you owe God anything? Well, everything you have came from God. James says so. It says all good gifts, all perfect gifts come down from the Father of lights from above. I think it's maybe James 1.7 or 1.17. It's right in there. Yes, and that's a good verse. And, that, and that's a fact. Whose air are you breathing? Whose world are you living in? Well, I don't know. The government tell you it's theirs. <laughs> if they could, they'd put a meter on the end of your nose and tax you for air. Uh huh? Yeah. I think eventually everybody's going to be born with a cell phone in their ear. Yeah. Yeah, it's just going to be a part of you. Some people, they just... Well, I guess I'll leave that alone. I just got a flip phone. Whoa. Now I leave it in my car overnight. I get in there the next day. I tell Carol, I don't have to worry about it. Nobody's going to steal it. <laughs> now you know, all these fancy, expensive phones, they'd probably take that. Well, I, mean, I shouldn't tell this, I guess, but it used to have be a Christian bookstore down at Fisher's, down there where Cracker Barrel's at, right in there. And uh, I went in there, and they, they had the Bibles along the very front as soon as you went in the door. And I went in there, and the Bibles were moved all the way to the back. And I said, well, how come you moved the Bibles from the front all the way there? He said, too many people were stealing them. Oh, man. <laughs> well, if they were stealing them, they'd need to read them. I think it says you shouldn't be stealing. But let's move on. Then in verses 9 through 10, he says... Uh, he just keeps, just keep praying. It says if you go and ask your neighbor for some help at the night, and they're already in bed, says just keep praying. They might not get up and do it for you just because they're your friend, but if you keep, I guess, persuading them, you think God sometimes wants to know if we really mean business? Well, you really want somebody to get saved? Should you just pray for them to get saved one time? Maybe two times, three times. Well, I think it was George Mueller, and he was known. He ran an orphanage, and he never did ask anybody for money. 
people just gave to the orphanage. And uh, he said he, he prayed for three men to get saved for 50 years. And they didn't get saved till he, and then he died. Six months after he died, the first one got saved. Think he prayed for a long time? Should we be consistent in our praying? Yes. If we really desire something from God, of course, don't be praying out of God's will. We need to talk about that a little bit. When you pray, you ought to pray believingly. Amen. Well, God, can God answer prayers? Yes. If we try and pray the right way, we're praying in God's will. I believe you always have your prayer answered. I believe Jesus got every prayer He ever prayed answered. Somebody says, well, what about that one in the Garden of Gethsemane? And He said, let this cup pass for me, nevertheless thy will. Well, I, don't, I, I think maybe we misunderstand. I don't, I don't, he didn't want to die in the garden. He wanted to die on the cross because that's the only way He could save us. Amen. Maybe that prayer did get answered. But sometimes, well, well, God didn't answer that one. Did He die on the cross? Yes. yes. But maybe He wasn't asking not to die on the cross because He knew He was going to die on the cross. That was a plan, wasn't it? Amen. That was the only way He could save us. But He didn't want the devil killing Him in the garden. And if you read in the accounts there in Matthew, Mark, Luke, where it's talking about it says he's sweating like big drops of blood dropping off of him. And he says he's in an agony. And I believe the devil's uh, demons were surrounding him trying to kill him. But it wasn't time for him to die. Amen. Because he had to die on a cross. That was God's plan. But I believe if we pray and it's God's plan, it'll happen. I was talk, talking to some fellows out there at the farmer's market yesterday about we just need to pray in God's will, don't we? Somebody says, how do we know? Well, I think I'd study my Bible. And there you go. That'd probably help. I heard the story about a, a little small church in a town and seemed they had everything going for them. It's kind of like the little town my dad come from, Owensville, Indiana. There was only, uh, they had four churches in, uptown on the square, one on three corners. Well, that was three churches. And there was only one corner, and you couldn't build a tavern or a bar within so many feet of a church. And so there was only one place in the, uptown there where you could have a bar. And there was a grocery store in it. There was a supermarket in it, and they put it in the lease where you couldn't put a bar in there. But uh, I heard this story of another little town, and uh, they had it was kind of like that. They didn't have any alcohol. They didn't have any gambling houses, no liquor stores in the, the area. But after a few years, a nightclub moved in. And they opened up a nightclub. That sounds like Noblesville. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. About every, everybody wants to serve alcohol in Noblesville anymore. Yeah, walk a lot of money involved in it. Isn't there? I was shocked when Cracker Barrel started serving alcohol. I think of that as more of a family type of restaurant. But one friend Carol put on Facebook, she didn't think that was a good idea to have open package alcohol and walking around town with it. And uh, one of the friends that Martin Bryan grew up with said, well, you can't have any fun if you can't drink. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. In college, I had a lot of roommates. They'd go out and get drunk and then they're throwing up in the trash can having a hangover the next day. I don't know if that was fun or not. But anyway, this church congregation was uh, all upset about them building this uh, nightclub in the in the town, and uh, some of the members asked God to burn the nightclub down. They were praying, asking God to burn the nightclub down. And somebody says, "Well, that's not scriptural." 
You know, if you go to the book of Psalms, there's some Psalms where it prayed for God to judge the wicked people. There's a group of Psalms like that. Well, will God judge the wicked people? You will. Well, be sure your sins will find you out. Be not uh, deceived. God is not mocked for what a man soweth. That shall he also reap. Galatians 6, 7. That other one's in Deuteronomy. But anyway, they were praying. and wasn't too long after that, lightning hit the bar and uh, the nightclub and burned it down. And uh, a few days later, the thunderstorm. And the owner knew how the people had been praying in the church. And he blamed them on it burning down. He believed in prayer. Yeah. So here's the nightclub owner. And he, 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 he says, well, it's their fault. They were praying they'd get burnt down, and it got burned down. And so the... Uh, lawyer come along and that's what for this nightclub owner and, and uh, said they were praying for him and, uh, to get burned it down. The church hired a lawyer and fought the uh, charges. Well, God didn't. They were praying for it to burn down but they didn't believe God burned it down. At the lost guy, he thought it was that God burned it down. Now, who really believed in prayer? Right. <laughs> and and so after the deliberation, the judge declared uh, it's the opinion of the court that whoever or wherever the uh, guilt may lie, the tavern owner is the one who really believed in prayer while the church members did not. Well, that's a sad situation, isn't it? Somebody says, well, I don't believe that. Well, I want you to go to Acts chapter 12 Acts chapter 12 and uh, Peter's in jail and they're praying for him to get out of jail and I, I always think this is a funny story in Acts chapter 12 and it starts in verse 1 Acts 12 1 uh, now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church and he killed James, the brother John, with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then uh, were the days of the unleavened bread. And when he had uh, apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four quatrains quantrin of soldiers to keep him in intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. And Peter therefore was kept in prison, but, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church and to God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. So he's got two guards on him, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door uh, kept the prison and behold the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter uh, on the side and raised him up saying arise quickly and his chains fell off from his hands and the angel said unto him gird thyself and bind on thy sandals also so he did and he, he saith unto him Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he uh, and he went out and followed him. And was not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but th uh, thought he saw a vision. When the, uh, so really Peter's kind of confused here. Verse ten. When they were past the first and the second ward. They came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them on his own accord. Well, wow. automatic door opener. <laughs> they know that was in the Bible. That's right. Huh? <laughs> was God ahead of times? Amen. Well, we don't even have one in our church, do we? Well, the Bible does talk about a doorkeeper in the house of God. So if I could just be the doorkeeper, I'd be really thrilled I could do that for God. If I could just let people in out of the door. 
Maybe Martin's the doorkeeper. Does he help people get in and out? Uh, somebody said, well, that's not important. Well, I think it is. I think that's important. Well, I got sidetracked. Right down here in verse 10, it says, And they went out and passed on through one street, and forth with the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. Well, he knew they'd probably praying for him to get out of prison. And uh, he says, well, the Lord answered their prayer. And I wanted to say, Lord answered my prayer. Here I am. The angel woke me up in the middle of the night and the chains fell off and I just walked right out. Now verse 12. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, uh, where many were gathering together praying. So they're having a prayer meeting. Weren't they having a prayer meeting? And uh, they were praying for Peter to get out of jail, out of prison. Verse 13, And Peter knocked at the door of the gate. A damsel came to hearken, uh, hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness. She's all excited. They've been praying for Peter to get out of prison. Here he is. And she goes running into the house, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And our prayers are answered. Peter's out here. You've been praying for him to get out of prison. He's standing out here. And she's all excited. Verse 15, And they said unto her, Thou art mad. <laughs> we don't believe God answered the prayer. Isn't that what they're saying? Yeah. Here we've been praying, but we don't believe that God answers prayer. Well, it's kind of like that bar deal, right? Do you really believe God will answer prayers? Well, do we need to? Should you pray believing? Amen. Believing God can answer prayers? Has God ever answered a prayer for you? Ever? Well, I've seen a few miracles. But then I've seen one maybe we weren't praying in God's will. We need to pray in God's will. And if we pray in God's will, I believe He'll answer the prayer. But we need to believe He will. But she can st constantly affirm that it was even so. Then said they, it is His angel. But Peter continued knocking. Let me in, let me in. They stand out there. They've been praying for him. <laughs> he can't even get in. Well, he got out of prison, but he can't get in to the prayer meeting. <laughs> I always think this is funny. Does God have a sense of humor? Goes through every other door. But Peter continued knocking when they had opened the, opened the door and saw him. They were astonished. Shocked. Man, we got a prayer answered. Well, I don't know. If we don't pray much, maybe we'd be shocked if we got one answered. Or if we ought to be praying in God's will. But he beckoned unto them with a hand to hold their peace, declaring unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. He says, Go tell everybody we got the prayer answered. I got out of prison. <coughs> got out of prison. Oh, I, I told you that other story. That's a... Um, I don't know if it's a made-up story, but this isn't a made-up story, is it? No. Isn't no. it in the Bible? It's true. Well, then I believe it's true. Maybe that other one was. I'm not sure about that. I don't know where I got that story, but I got it picked it up someplace. And uh, so in Acts chapter 12, verses 1 down through 19, we read all that. I should pray persistently. 
I say George Mueller, Mueller prayed for somebody to get saved for 50 years, and uh, six months after he died, the person got saved. Maybe I'll just keep praying, keep trusting God. The name, uh, well, I pray in the name of Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 14. We are commanded to pray in Jesus' name. John 14, 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Somebody says, well, then as long as we tag Jesus' name on it, God's got to answer it, right? <laughs> Is that what that means? That's not what that means. Well, John 16, verses 23 and 24 says, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. R.A. Torrey reminds us that what that really means is we're praying in God's will. Amen. We're praying in God's will. Amen. And if we're praying in God's will, then he'll answer our prayers. Maybe we ought to study our Bible to try to find out what God's will is on things. Amen. And then, Edward always tells me, about every Saturday he tells me, well, I'll see you tomorrow, the Lord willing. Have you ever told me that, Edward? You told me that yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. Probably next week if we're back out there, you'll tell me again. <laughs> see, he's not bragging. We've got to depend on God. Amen. Isn't that what he's meaning? And I tell I agree with him. But I tell him, I say, well, I'll see you one way or another. If the Lord comes, we'll be on the way up and I'll see you. If he doesn't, then I'd be good if I could see you in church. But we can't assume God's going to do this or that. But when we pray in God's will... You think he could pray for people to get saved and that's God's will? Well, then we could get into specific people. Well, my Bible says he wants everybody to be saved, but he won't make them get saved. But if they'll yield, then he'll save them. Isn't that true? Maybe we ought to be praying for that person to yield to God's will. Sometimes we pray backwards, upside down. Maybe we're praying, God, you do this or do that. Well, you know, He can't make anybody get saved. They have to want to get saved. Right. But if they want to get saved, will He save them? Maybe I say, Lord, convict their heart. Amen. Speak to their heart, Lord. Let them know you love them. You know, I'd rather somebody get saved because God loves them rather than they're afraid they're going to die and go to hell. Amen. I had a brother in law ask me that one time. He says, would you preach and try to scare people into getting saved? I said, yeah, if that's the way I could get them saved. But I'd rather they got saved because they knew the Lord loved them and wanted them to go to heaven. Amen. Not out of... It's not an insurance policy. Now what it is to some people? It is, unfortunately. Fire escape, a spare tire. Is that what God is to you? Like well, you only get the spare tire out when the tire goes flat, right? Otherwise, forget it. It just stays back there. You probably don't even know if it's got any air in it. <laughs> until, until you go to get it down and it's flat. Of course, now they got those fancy tires. There. We'll, we'll forget those. But then, you got to pray for your needs. Our daily bread. You ever prayed for God? To help you get your bills paid. Amen. But it'd be a waste of your time to pray for God to help you pay your bills if you won't work. <laughs> well, I think you'd be praying out of God's will. Right. Now, if you're handicapped and can't, that's different. Right. Isn't it? But if you just don't want to work, then I think that's... But God will supply your needs too. That's another thing we get into. Some things we pray for we don't need. Most of us have more than we need. Don't we? 
Somebody says, well, what about that? Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, it says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to the riches of in, riches and glory of Christ Jesus. Uh, we're all cre uh, created. Uh, uh, we all have needs. Do you have any needs? If it's really a need. A lot of times we pray for things not really our needs. Bible also says we ought to be content with what we have. The love of money is the root of all evil. Yes, me guys, we've got a, a million dollars. Well, I want two million. We've got two million. Well, I want three million. Isn't that the way people are? Well, they ought to be content. One one need we have is peace. You need any peace? Why? Well, I get depressed listening to everything people are saying. Is it depressing? Yeah. If you watch the news, is it depressing? Yes. You talk to some people, is it depressing? Yes. There were certain people I worked with at Coke. If they come in the morning, I didn't want to talk to them. Because I knew as sure as they come up, they're going to be all negative. Yeah. There were other people that would come in, I'd like talking to them. Because they were positive. Somebody says, well, you shouldn't have thought like that. Well, I'd rather think positive than negative. I always want to think the best about people until they prove to me I can't. Isn't that what we ought to try to do? But we're living in the day of scam artists. No kidding. Man, it gets kind of scary. Yes, and we ought to pray for others. That's another thing I wanted to mention. In John chapter 17, verse 9 says, I... I I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Jesus is praying in John chapter 17 for the disciples, and he also prays for you. You'll have to study that prayer. You'll see it. He prayed for the disciples that were with him then, and then the ones that would get saved in the future. But he's praying specifically for saved people. But he's probably, uh, I'm sure he wanted the people that weren't saved to get saved. Amen. John 17, 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from evil. Well, you know, I sometimes wish I could just go on. Get out of this mess. Now, I'm not asking for a show of hands. I don't want to see a show of hands. You ever feel that way? Mm -hmm. yes. Probably about everybody here has sometime or other. Paul said, I'm in a strait betwixt two. Desire to part and go on being in heaven, but he says it's more needful for you for me to stay and help you. Then when he got put in prison, he said, That's a good thing. And people say, Well, how could Paul say that was a good thing? He says, because it'll cause the other Christians to take over and do what I was doing. You know, it's not just the preacher and his wife's job to keep the church going. Amen. Yes or no? But I can't. You know, some people, they don't mind putting money in the offering plate. Yeah. But they don't have much time to give God. Done their part, so. Yeah. Well, I, Lord, I'll do this much, but no more. And uh, one of the songs we uh, talks sing about us, "No, not one." And, I shall not be moved. <laughs> I shall not be moved. Well, depends on what you mean by that. Yeah. Now. Nobody's going to get me to believe something that's not true to the Bible. So I'm not going to get moved that way. But on the other hand, if God wants me to move, I need to get up and move. Amen. And I'm going to tell you this, as you get older, guess what you're going to find out? It gets harder. You have to put out more willpower to get up and move. 
maybe not even being older. It could be you're young, but you have other problems. No amens on any of that? See, now, you guys ought to help me out. Amen! <laughs> I, I can get Brother Noble's little sign out and hold it up. Still there. Man, it's probably under here someplace. I'm the side of it. Of course, I don't like to hear Brother Noble preach. I like to hear about all the preachers that all the preachers that come here and preach. I like to hear them preach. Amen. You know why? Preach the Bible. Now, and another thing, I believe their lives back up what they preach. That's right. And if I didn't think that, I wouldn't ask them to come and preach for us. Paul prayed for others. Romans 16 gives you a list of his friends that he prayed for. He was praying for people up in Rome. He was praying for people on a lot of... You know, he starts a church somewhere. Edward does that all the time. He'll pray for the people in the churches he's been in before he came to this church. Out in California, up in what, Michigan or Wisconsin? Think that's a good idea? Did you ever go to another church? Do you pray for those people? Really, I think about that some. Well, I'm not doing very good time wise. It's too late for me to pray for the ones that already left out of this church and gone to heaven. But while they were down here, I prayed for them. And then the Lord sends me other people to pray for. You're it. Huh. Says uh, I'm a sinner if I don't pray for you. Right. Scripture says that. Well, I'm gonna finish up. I think I gotta work real hard at it. Got to be praying for others. John 17 verse 9. Pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which Thou hast given me. For they are thine. Has the Lord given you to me? If I'm your pastor. Even if I'm not your pastor and you just come here regular. I feel like he gave you to me. To watch over you and be a shepherd. But I'm an under shepherd. I have to have God's help. In John chapter 17 verse 15 says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. Should we pray for God's protection of people? I believe we should. We're living in a wicked, evil world. And you know what? God gets blamed for it. Well, I always heard, you know, you point like that. You got more fingers pointing back at you than... Right, three. You know, so. Probably we want to pray for the unsaved. George uh, Whitfield, famous evangelist, says, Oh Lord, give me souls or take my soul. You really care about people getting saved? The least you could do is pray for them. You ought to even pray for people you don't know. Oliver B. Green always prayed, Lord, at the end of his radio program, what the Bible said. It wasn't what the Bible said. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, he would pray, Lord, save that one that's the nearest to hell. And, uh, grab him out of the fire. Yeah. I always thought that was an impressive prayer myself. Well, we don't know who it is. We don't know how long we're going to be around. I'm amazed I'm still alive. Because a lot of the people I grew up with that were good Christians are gone. Every time I go to Riverview, and Carol and I go out there quite often, I think, well, I'll never see the Meredith out here again. I'll never see a lot of the people out here again. Somebody says, well, why? They're in heaven. Well, I don't see them here. But I used to see them out there. 
I never see a lot of people in this church again. But I thank the Lord I'll see them again. And I can tell you where they used to sit. So I, you know, people probably think I'm crazy. They thought Paul was crazy. They thought Jesus was crazy. Were they? Well, some people would think so. I think the rest of the world's crazy. Amen. Pray for others will bring blessings to them and us. Praying for others will bring blessings to them and us. If they're blessed, will that bless us? But I'll tell you too, if you pray for others, others will probably pray for you. Isn't that right? Well, I should have been a lot more efficient and preached a lot quicker, right? But I think I'm finished up for right now, so let's all stand. Well, I, I pray that I am. I used to.